If you want to learn a bit about webhooks, how to add them in Typeform, and what all that data actually means, then you're in the right place. Hey, I'm Susie from Typeform, and today our solutions engineer, Andrew, is going to give you a breakdown of what webhooks are and how to add them in Typeform. Then he'll dive a little bit deeper into some of the nitty gritty about webhook payloads and interpreting some of that data. So without further ado, take it away, Andrew. Hey there, folks, it's Andrew at Typeform. First off, if you're new to webhooks, high level, what actually is a webhook? Essentially, it allows data to flow from Typeform when a new response comes in to your server. And the value in this is that typically you'll, you'll use webhooks if you are trying to integrate with another tool where we either don't have a native integration for it here in our Connect panel, or if you're using a tool like Zapier or Make.com, sort of these third-party app connectors, and the tool that you're trying to integrate with doesn't uh, isn't supportive there, you could use webhooks. So webhooks are really just a custom way to interface and transmit the data that you're collecting in Typeform to your server and then ultimately to your own custom app destination, right? Um, so that's really the high level of the TLDR on webhooks. So now let's show you how to actually set them up in Typeform and then again look at the structure of that payload, which is all the data that's actually transmitted from Typeform uh, to your custom destination. So just for context, in this form, I have a really basic form of about six questions. We'll go through it as an example. This is just like a landscaping company lead gen form. So we're asking for their name, uh, whether they're a residential or commercial customer, their email, contact information, and so on. So that's just the, the context here to set the stage. And I'm going to publish these edits as well, because that'll mean we're using the most updated version of the form as it appears here. Okay, so now let's actually set up webhooks. To do that, we're gonna go first into the connect panel, and then here you'll see this webhook option. So we'll click on that. We'll click to add a webhook, and then here you'll see it's prompting us for the URL. So this is the endpoint, the destination where we wanna send this data, right? And again, if you're not a developer, if you're new to this, this isn't just gonna be your typical like website domain, a page on your website. This is gonna be a URL, a destination to the backend on your server where you can actually receive these requests with the data. You can then process it using custom code, maybe modify, um, kind of transform the data in type form before sending it again to your custom app or tool, typically via that tool's uh, API. So anyway, uh, where are we gonna get this URL. Again, if you're more advanced, you're a developer, you'll probably know how to get this. Again, you'll create uh, kind of your own endpoint, which would then be input here. Uh, so your own URL address. Uh, in this case, I'm using this site that I love. It's great for just kind of demoing the high level of webhooks, which is just called webhook.site. But this is a great site that I've personally found to show this process in a no code simplified way. So what we're going to do is copy this unique URL here. So this will be our endpoint, our webhook destination for where we want to send this response data in Typeform. So I'm going to paste that in there, click Save. And then we're going to enable this. But before I do, I'll also show you some other customization options that exist here. So if I click Edit, we'll see that URL that we just input. We also have the option to include a secret. So this is popular if you want some extra security when you're transmitting this data to your server. Basically, this will uh, allow you to input, again, a quote unquote secret. Think of it almost like a password, just some sort of unique identifier that only you know, so that if somebody does try to kind of fraudulently get access to this URL here, um, where in theory they could kind of submit fake requests and, you know, modify your database and all that kind of in an unauthorized way. Uh, if you set up a secret here, that will also display in the webhook delivery. Uh, allowing you basically more security so you can say, hey, on my server side, I only want to accept uh, and kind of process requests that include that secret. So again, there is kind of a layer of greater security there. So uh, what I can do is just include my own secret here. I'll just call it, you know, testing dash one, two, three. We can toggle to see that or not. Um, but again, it is a more granular setting that you have here. Uh, SSL verification, frankly, I haven't done much with. Um, and then finally here, you have the triggers. Uh, so you can either trigger, send the webhook, 
Outlook uh, when a full response has been submitted in type form, or if you're using partial submit points, you could also trigger it based on when that partial submit point is reached. So if somebody reaches that without completing the form and you still wanna access that partial data, you could do that in addition to receiving the full responses. And in this case, I'll just choose completed responses and we'll click save. And again, for this webhook to actually work, even just for testing purposes, we need to toggle this on to enable the webhook. And by the way, this is just another webhook I've set up. You can ignore that. Okay, great. So again, you'll see there's nothing happening yet on the webhook site side of things uh, because we actually need to go through and submit some test data. So we'll submit a response. To do that, I'm gonna go to the share panel here, copy this link, paste it in, and now we can take this for a spin. So I'll just kind of speed through this here. I'll enter my name. I'll say I'm a residential. And again, my email uh, here, and we'll click OK. And then finally, I will just answer a question here. And again, these answers are pretty irrelevant. We're just showing kind of how this data gets processed. Great, so I've completed the form. It says, thank you. Let's now go over to the webhook.site side of things. And you can see there's actually a submission, right? Uh, a successful webhook delivery. And we can also look at this on the type form side. If we go back into the connect panel, back into webhooks, back into uh, this last webhook we set up, we can click to view deliveries and we can see the same data here, right? And when you see this response code of 200, that means it's a successful delivery. If we see something else like a 400 code or really anything else that indicates that the webhook was not delivered successfully. So anyway, let's parse through some of this data and what exactly it means. So the key elements that I'll point out here are as follows. So here we have the form ID. This can obviously be very important and useful uh, in identifying the form itself, right? If you have a lot of forms, uh, this is helpful information to distinguish what form is, is what. Um, and you can see and connect the form ID listed here. You'll see that form ID indicated here after the form part of the URL. So after that forward slash. So that's the form ID. Um, what else is useful here? The token. So this is actually the response ID. I know here it's labeled as token, um, but in other words, this is a unique identifier for the response itself. It is worth noting sometimes uh, creators are confused. They think that this is a unique identifier for the respondent themselves rather than the submission, um, and that is not true. In other words, this is always going to be unique with every submission. It's not like if you get two submissions with the same email from a respondent, this is gonna be the same for both of those. Again, this is truly unique at the response level. It's not connected to like a respondent profile where this would be the same value for uh, the same respondent going through multiple submissions or forms. Uh, here you have the landed at and submitted at. So basically when they first landed on the form and when they submitted the form, this can often be useful if you're looking to do some like custom calculations with how long it took the respondent to complete the form. Certainly you do get aggregate data on this in type form itself, the average time to complete. But again, if you're looking to do this on an individual respondent level, this can be helpful. Here you have hidden fields. So uh, these are fields that you set up if you're, for example, uh, sending out a form through like your email database, through your email marketing provider, you already have the respondent's name, user ID, preferences, et cetera. Uh, if you're passing those in without having the respondent actually answer those questions in the form itself, you would see those there. So again, basically pre-populated data. This is also referred to as URL parameters. Down here you have variables, so these could be custom variables that you create such as score if you're doing sort of like a quiz or a scoring survey, scoring form, uh, you would see those here. You also see there's plenty of them in this case, this uh, prefaced by this enrich language. Um, so those are for lead enrichment. If you're capturing an email address in type form and you have lead enrichment enabled, uh, oftentimes if you're using typically a business email, we can pull in supplementary data from outside sources. So for example, if you enter in your business email, we might be able to pull in you know, your job title or the country of the uh, company that you work for, income level, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll see a lot of that here because we have plenty of enrichment variables. Here in the definition array of the webhook delivery, this JSON file, uh, you'll see 
the whole structure of the form. So again, the form ID, the title of the form, all the different fields, aka the questions that you're asking in the form, what kind of question it is, whether it's short text, multiple choice, you'll see the ID for that uh, question is along with a ref parameter, which I can touch on briefly in a minute here. Uh, again, if it's multiple choice, you can see within that all the different choices and labels for those. Um, so really a lot of data here. But again, typically when you're using uh, webhooks, you want to look at the answers array. Uh, again, that form definition is always going to be static. That's just the structure of the form itself. Um, and also up here you have endings. So again, uh, the different endings within the form. But again, those are all the options. Those are going to be static for all submissions. What's typically valuable here is this answers array, because this is going to be the actual answers, the specific responses provided by a given respondent. Uh, so again, if you want to process that data, upload it to a database, transform it, et cetera, et cetera, this is where you're going to see all of that unique submission data for the respondent. So here you can see this, you know, question by question breakdown. In this case, you know, the first question where I entered my first name, last name, uh, here where I indicated that I was a residential customer, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really the core structure of the webhook delivery. And again, some of the structure and format here will vary based on the question type. So again, here we have just text where I'm entering in that company name uh, versus here it's email and I'm entering in a little bit of different data. So there is some variation here, but that's really the core structure of webhooks. Now, the final thing that I want to mention here, uh, again, if we go back down here to that answers array, and also a, a trick here that I often use is a command F. Again, if you really do have a lot of uh, data here that you're sifting through, if it's a really you know uh, long payload here, um, you can, of course, just do a search in your browser or so I can search for answers. And uh, in this case, I actually just happen to be there. But again, it can kind of point you in the right direction if, again, you're kind of overwhelmed by all the, the data here in the payload. So anyway, uh, again, you'll see for each of these, you have this ref. Um, and oftentimes, you can kind of infer like, OK, this question, again, is my first name. This is last name, um, et cetera, et cetera. But oftentimes, you want like a better description, especially for developers who are kind of mapping all this data and processing it. So the beautiful thing is that you can actually fully customize this ref uh, key value pair here, right? So instead of just this long, somewhat uh, you know, abstract alphanumeric string here, you can customize this to be a little bit more human readable. So I'll show you one more example of how to customize that and what the payload looks like there. So let's go back uh, into Typeform. I'm going to click the form settings here. We'll go to block references. And then again, here you can see all the matching alphanumeric uh, strings, which are generated by default, uh, and the fact that we can customize those. So I'll just do it for this first one, uh, or maybe a couple. I'll call this first name, we'll call this last name, and we'll call this customer type, right? I'm not going to label all of these, but just for simplicity, we can do that. And you can also do this with the endings as well. If you have multiple endings, maybe like a product recommendation quiz where you want to kind of label uh, the different product outcomes, product bundles, uh, that can be very useful as well. So anyway, I'm going to click save here. We will again publish the edits to that form. And now let's uh, copy that link, go through it one more time. So I'll resubmit this just with some different data for Variety and spice here. I'll say commercial this time. I'll say test.com instead of example.com. And OK, so we've submitted that. Great. Now, again, if we go to the answers array, this will be a better example of uh, kind of searching for it here. We can now see that again, instead of for that ref, the long alphanumeric string, we have, you know, first name, which is much more human readable, last name, uh, customer type, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the rundown of webhooks. If you have any questions, let us know. I hope this was useful and uh, happy typeforming. Thank you so much, Andrew, for that really thorough walkthrough of webhooks in Typeform. If you want more resources on webhooks, don't forget to check the links in the description below to the Typeform Help Center, the Typeform Community, and the Typeform Developers Portal. Here you'll find a lot more of the FAQs and troubleshooting tips for webhooks. And of course, as always, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this.